our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let's join together in singing our opening hymn, hymn number 246, Hark a Thrilling Voice is Sounding. You may stand as you are able. restoration, save us when we find ourselves spiritually thirsty. Help us walk your road with your purpose, strengthened by your living water. Amen. And now we sing our Advent song, and I don't remember the number of it. It's, um, oh, well, it's in the next slide. There we go. And, and Ainsley was on top of it. 240. Light one candle. We're doing three verses. You may be seated as Ainsley leads us in our reading. 
A reading from Isaiah chapter 55. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you that have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord that he may have mercy on them and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish what, that which I pr purpose, and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy, and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle, and it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. The word of the Lord. Well, our Welka group had a very interesting discussion earlier this week in which they decided how to donate uh, the proceeds from uh, their fundraisers. The CCC event, maybe, maybe even all year, I'm not sure. I was uh, able to join them for just a short time and uh, got into a little bit of the discussion and it revolved a little bit around, is it better to give to the food shelf and make sure that the money is used only for essentials? Or should we surprise one or two families with uh, an extra gift this Christmas and they can spend it however they felt they needed it most? Well, we talked about the possibility that this money might actually be misspent in some way about being spent on alcohol or lottery tickets or cigarettes, as I, uh, I know that sometimes when we've helped people, that's how they spent it. And I shared that that's actually the hardest part of my job. The thing that should bring me the most joy in being able to help people actually makes me more cynical, as I find that I am lied to frequently. It makes it difficult then to joyfully give to those who actually are honestly sharing real needs with me. Well, our lesson for today happens to speak directly to this dilemma, I think. <laughs> I don't think it has any easy answers for us, but I am finding myself being challenged about my perspective on, the, on these things. Now, before I get into the specifics of this lesson, I want to tell you a story about one young family who we have helped out multiple times in the past. They're not members, and I'm changing some of the details to, to make sure that you have no idea who this is. Well, we helped out with rent, with car repair, multiple times with food and gas, and uh, we were able to help them even more generously because uh, a member specifically gave for that purpose. And instead of our emergency assistance fund that has, has limits, we try to spread that out uh, to help as many people. We were able to help this family 
greatly. And I was really happy to be helping them and seeing them through some really tough times financially. And it looked really promising that they were gonna come out the other end and, and be on their feet again. They even asked me about paying the church back for the help that we've given. And I said, we don't do that here. This is a gift. If you wanna pay it forward, you can donate to our emergency assistance fund, but uh, no one but the counters will know that you've given to that fund, and no one but the president and myself will know how much you've received from us. So it is truly, just pay it forward. And you, can, you don't have to do it there, you can do it some other way too. Well, after I gave them another generous gift, uh, a gift card for groceries at Dick's, I later discovered that they'd thrown a party for their friends and neighbors with this extra money that they received from us. And I heard details that they had grilled shrimp and steak and they were giving out beer. My first thought was, why wasn't I invited? <laughs> No, my first thought was actually, that's just plain wrong. And I was mad. I don't even buy, well, I don't like shrimp, but I don't buy steak <laughs> that often. Well, I was so mad and I was sure they were going to be coming back for more help because they were not out of their crisis yet. Well, that might explain why I wasn't invited as well. But another part of me actually admired their generosity. They were feeding their spirits and their neighbors' spirits with a party instead of just making sure that they had enough to just get by. I thought maybe I should be more inspired by this story than mad. And by the way, they never did ask me for help again Maybe they heard I was angry. I had heard they started getting help from another church. And I have no idea how they're doing now. This was a long time ago. But my question remains, was it a good thing for them to do? To throw a party instead of buying only just the essentials? <laughs> And now I'm not looking for a survey of answers or for you to raise your hand, but I do want you to just hold on for a moment what your gut tells you immediately when you hear this story. Are you mad that they abused the generosity for, for throwing a party when they had so many other needs? Or are you thinking, hey, that's great. We all need to celebrate. Well, let's see what Isaiah has to say. Ho, oh, everyone who thirsts, you that have no money, come, buy, and eat. Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food. Now, I know Isaiah is speaking metaphorically, but this may apply literally as well. There's value in celebrating, even when facing extreme distress. Delight in rich food, even when you have no money. This is, in fact, the purpose, or one of the purposes, of the regular practice of Sabbath. At least once a week, we remind ourselves to celebrate this life, to enjoy it. Dr. Ryan Bonfiglio spoke about this at our Southeast Minnesota Synod Theological Conference in November. I skipped out on it, but I was able to see it on video later. And he reminded us that the Sabbath is not just a day in which you're not supposed to do any work, a day of rest, but it is also a day in which we're supposed to connect more deeply with whatever brings us joy and helps us celebrate life. 
He pointed out, too, that Sabbath was a, a communal practice. It was, it was for everybody. Make sure that even the lowest slave uh, or the alien resident among you, the foreigner, all of you should be celebrating life at least once a day, the poor and the rich alike, the children and the workers. And then... Um, Dr. Bonfiglio added that this day then became a day typically when Jewish families would celebrate with a feast with their friends and extended family. And he added that it also became a day when couples would regularly make love. Okay, I gotta pause for a moment so that doesn't distract you too much. God didn't need a day of rest because he was worn out. He took a day of rest from work to actually enjoy his creation. And we are invited to do the same. Now, Isaiah wasn't specifically talking about the Sabbath celebrations, but he is offering us an invitation to consider and celebrate abundant life. The abundant life of God when times are tough, perhaps especially when times are tough. So Isaiah would favor throwing the party, right? Maybe. Maybe not. You might have noticed I skipped over a verse earlier where Isaiah says, Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread? and your labor for that which does not satisfy. His question challenges us how life-giving are our habits anyway? We often fall into the temptation of throwing a party not to celebrate life, but to distract ourselves, to escape from our lives. A friend of a friend's brother <laughs> once lost his job and he went out and he cut loose and he partied till middle of the night. And the next morning we happened to be staying at my friend's house at the same time. And he came down late morning <laughs> and he said, well, it didn't work. And we're like, what didn't work? Well, I got fired from my job. I went out and I got drunk and I woke up this morning and I still don't have a job. And now I've got a hangover. Of course, getting drunk or throwing a party isn't the only way that we try to escape our lives. We spend hours on social media, playing games, watching TV, or numbing out to our lives in many different ways. And it doesn't make any of these one things bad in themselves. But we have to determine if they are actually good methods of self-care for us, or if they're just adding to the downward spiral of more unhealthy and bad decisions. Isaiah challenges us to reflect on our lives. Why do we keep doing these things? Why do we continue habits and patterns if they aren't really life-giving for us? So this family that threw a party when they couldn't afford it, was it an exercise in bold, life-giving celebration of the abundance of God in, even in the midst of their poverty? Or was it a temporary escape from reality which would only come back to bite them and make life harder in the future? Only they can answer that for themselves. The greater point for the rest of us is to consider what our regular habits might be and whether they are truly life-giving. As Isaiah says, Seek the Lord while he may be found, and let the wicked forsake their way. Sometimes wickedness is refusing to celebrate the abundance of God because we are holding on too tight Celebrate, but make sure your celebration is truly life-affirming 
and life-giving. So here's my guess, if you're like me. If you had a strong reaction to the story I told you about that family throwing a party, if you landed on judgment, it's probably good for you to reflect on the need to celebrate more often, for all of us to celebrate, not just those who we think can afford it. The responsible thing is not always the right thing. I never thought I would hear myself say that. <laughs> Life should be celebrated regularly. If, however, you responded to this story with thinking, what's the problem with having a little fun? It probably would be good to think about whether that little fun in your life is really life-giving, or just one of the many ways that you habitually try to escape your own life. You really need to think about what's going to set you up for real joy. So the life, this life of faith is not about what we feel with conviction is right from our own limited perspectives, as it is about being in a trusting relationship with our God whose ways are not our ways. Faith is being willing to be surprised by God. Our automatic judgments of right and wrong are not the best guide to our life unless we have been trained to listen deeply to God's Word. And I am still learning to be very suspicious of my own understanding of God's Word, especially when I think God agrees with me completely. Thankfully, Isaiah tells us that even when we get it wrong, God can make our wrong still right. We may seek God imperfectly with confidence because God is also already seeking to fill us completely with his love. All the love that we need. God promises, you shall go out in joy and return in peace. And God's word never returns empty. It always fulfills its purpose. So sometimes we need to be encouraged to be more disciplined in our own efforts to love God and to love ourselves and to love each other better. But sometimes we just need to relax and be encouraged simply to rest in the confidence of the never-ending love that God has for us. And I suspect we probably need both at different times of our lives. There's a rhythm to life and faith and maturity starts to recognize that it's not always all one way or all the other way. And this is a good thing. In Jesus' name. Amen.